Hi, I'm the developer of the PF2 Workbench and I thought I'd talk a bit about uh, the varying, various features that are part of it. Uh, the top few boxes here are GM only settings. If I were a player, I would only see this sub menu. Um, I start with mystification, which is the first feature I added. It's to, well, you don't always want to show the name of the monster they're facing. Sometimes you want it to be, hmm, okay, it's a humanoid of some sort. So I'll change this one there. Uh, it's a humanoid of some sort. And I've chosen this for this demo to add a random number and to add also a prefix it with a random word, just for fun. Uh, there are a lot of other settings here. Just play around with them and see what difference do they make. Like, hmm, collecting small humanoid. Yeah, that might be nice. Or not. Another set of features is related to various reminders. This is also a GM only setting. Thus, the reminders here set here will affect players and uh, the GM. <coughs> For instance, if I say Estran here decides to attack, you get the warning, please target before you attack. All right, I should target, that's it. Hmm, this worked. And if you happen to be, say, slowed and you're in a combat, You get a reminder. Oh, sorry. You get a reminder every time it becomes your turn. Has two actions remaining. Who gets this reminder depends on who you are. I mean, I'm the game master, so I get to see it. But the owning player and the game master gets the reminder normally. And then we have uh, IWR reminder. That one's fairly basic. When you do damage to something that has, say you do piercing damage and the target has piercing resistance, you get reminded that, yeah, this creature has piercing resistance five, for instance. It doesn't, however, handle the more complicated ones like all the physical, etc. So it's only barely useful. Um, then we have, and I won't show off the breath weapon reminder. Yeah, actually, I will. I'll show off the breath weapon reminder. Oh, get me a dragon. And if I am a dragon and I use, the, use my breath weapon, I get a reminder icon that I have, in this case, five rounds. It rolls randomly uh, until I use my breath weapon again. Uh, it won't stop you from using it again. If you want it, you can just do it. I uh, see it's. That's a lot of breath weapons here. Uh, but still use sort of as a reminder. Do not cheat. Unless you want to, of course, in case you should. If you're a GM. If you're a player, you shouldn't cheat. And then we have all oh, right, enable the hero point handler. To get the hero point handler to actually work, you also have to go to here and set a keybind to open it. You could that is the only way to open it. And I'll set it to Shift H. I think that's about sounds about right. Shift H gets you the hero point handler. Uh, and here you can do a couple of things. You can say how long till it pops up again, or we'll turn it off. And you can choose to reset to one, for instance, reset to one and start the timer in 60 minutes. Now it'll take 60 minutes until it turns, or until I press the key, of course. Uh, if I had a logged in characters, it would have randomly chosen one of the uh, logged in players, sorry. It would have randomly chosen one of them to be the one who gets a hero point. As I don't currently have any logged in players, nothing appears in this list. And then we have oh, one, didn't I? All right, unable to attack. I'm not quite sure this one works, so we'll see here. I try to attack with Valerius, who has zero hit points and thus really shouldn't be able to. Yeah, 
That's the whole thing. And that's not likely to be able to attack a Mr. Weather. Okay, I'll, I'll fix that one. Next up, we have what I call the QL, that is quality of life settings, a random bunch of settings, basically. Uh, the first four ones are for my toolbox features, that is from there, the, the now, di now uh, discontinued PF PF2E toolbox module. I'll turn them all on for now, meaning that I need to reload. And as you can see, I haven't actually prepared for this. This is just me rambling on until I tire of it. Any back to the settings. Workbench, QOL. For instance, building custom creatures. If I open up some creature, this adult black dragon, as I have enabled the creature builder, <coughs> I can see this button here and I can change the creature. Okay, you should really have extreme strength. Count to seven, go down here, and it gets an extreme strength isn't really useful to change creatures intended to use on new creatures. If you want to change creatures, a more useful feature is this one, scale to level, allow scaling NPCs. Say I want a level one out of Black Dragon for some arcane reason. Then it does it. It does the job, puts it in a level one folder, and you have a really weak level one out of Black Dragon. This is mostly useful for when you're trying to upscale or downscale a threat. It isn't perfect. It doesn't handle uh, it doesn't handle persistent damage and it doesn't add or remove spells at all. But it does the math correctly according to the rules from the Game Master's Guide, so very useful. Then the MC Roll Utility, which is available on the Journals tab. And this is if you're, if you're really improvising, say that you don't actually have any stats for layers. You just put it there, but you know he's, uh, he's going to attack someone and he's a level six. He's a high threat, I think, so I just attack with him. Strike attack. This is when, when you're improvising and saying, okay, that was a hit, so he'll do damage. He was level six, uh, but he does low damage for whatever reason, etc. And you can do, ro do rolls for DCs, spell from spells, save hit points, whatever. It's a nice little tool. And then we have this one. You can normally add just click, but you can also shift click and to add five and control click to add 10. Sometimes useful. Uh, uh, I fixed one bug from the toolbox. It's no longer possible to go below zero. Uh, but that should be it really. Yeah. This feature, Itonation Radical, doesn't currently work, but I haven't removed it because I still think I can fix it. Then we have go go to Ezran to show off the next one, which is cast in private. Uh, this is mostly useful for GMs who sometimes don't want to show the place what spells they're using. Like, let's say Ezran wants to cast a private magic missile. So I held down control, it means that it's to game master only. And as I have also checked post public post a pub, post public message that spell has been cast. I find it difficult to talk apparently. Um you can see a message that an SV spell of the arcane tradition was cast. And you get on uh, DC with recall knowledge. You can customize this one a bit too by hiding the name and the skill if you feel that's necessary. I'll talk about this a bit later. Uh, if it was the same spell, uh, Shocking Ross is one, right? You... No, that's not a safe spell. Do I have a safe spell here even? No, I don't. Huh. Oh, well. If I had a safe spell, it would also... Or have I broken something? I may well have broken something. Let's give him a fireball spell. I'm sure he'll enjoy that. Uh, I knew that. Okay. There, 
survival spell. And I'll control click Art 1. And there you go. You get the reflex save. This is so that to make it easier for the GM, so you don't have to, oh, sh I want to tell them to, oh no, I want to tell them to roll the save, but you don't want to reveal it just so they can click on it. Instead, this is the same. It's the same one. So I tell the players to just click this one. Okay. Select the token and then click it. Oh, apparently Fireball lost and tree effect. Adult Black Dragon, what a surprise. Can't spell level one cast in this. Anyway. Next up, uh, special effect settings. This really contains uh, some support for animations, like um, an animation to play on Strike Maze, a sound to play on Strike Maze, Critical Maze, Success, etc. I haven't got this one turned on right now, uh, but it works. Play around with it. If you enjoy that. Then we have <clears throat> uh, the GM side automation settings. Uh, setting initiative to, initiative to just before the current competent. I'll add another something to the combat. Now it's Esran's turn. No, I will do it this way. It's now the humanoid's turn. Which we happen to know is a goblin, but goblin commander. But the players don't know that. In this case, it turns out it's a really dangerous goblin commander. It manages to kill Esrin, or at least get him to die. And as he just reached zero hit points, he was moved before the goblin in initiative. Uh, another one is who is allowed to set the option to auto roll damage on a hit? Can everyone do it? Can GM do it? Can players do it? I'll get around to this one in this this one's in a bit. Automatically applying cameras based on bulk, as you may or may not have noticed, when I gave Valerius here a bunch of long swords, he got encumbered. And if I remove the long swords, he's no longer encumbered. I'll get back to this one. Uh, automatic reduced stand on turn start, and as let's say, oh, sorry, let's say that this guy gets stunned, and when it becomes his turn, his stand is removed automatically. And then we have this one is a weird thing. I won't mention it um, all that much, but. Some of the automation that I'm going to show in a bit only works if the player applies the damage. If you're someone, as if you're a GM who applies the damage, who prefers to apply the damage to players yourself, disable this one. Um, play around with the results and see if you're happy with it. I will. I hope I'll be able to come up with a better solution for it. Next up, the various client automation settings. What's visible on this screen it depends on what you set visible in the world automation settings. For now, I made everything visible. The first one's order rolling damage. You've seen some of this here. And you can see it here. I um, attack with using Estrin with his. Wow, up the layers, I'm sorry. Uh, with Estrin using his staff. And it's a hit, it's a critical hit. It rolls damage automatically. It does not apply damage automatically. And the same is done for spells, like, uh, let's bring back this magic missile, and it rolls damage. And then you can apply it. Or for fireball, it rolls the damage. It, and then the, play, the, the targets can click the save and apply damage, half damage, double damage, or whatever is appropriate. And uh, then we get to, this one shouldn't happen, but if somehow a creature has a spell attack for which I cannot find a spell, it will give a warning for it. Um, if you have persistent damage, uh, apply the persistent damage module, it will automatically apply that damage. I won't show that one because I don't actually have persistent damage installed right now. Same thing for persistence healing. Uh, by the system. 
And then we have these ones. These only work if the player applies the damage. They automatically give or remove unconscious, wounded, dying. Unfortunately, I'm trying to figure out why this is so, but I haven't yet. So, I gave Estra, who was dying, some hit points. So, he lost his dying, uh, oh, sorry, and instead gained wounded. Kill him again, gets another die, revive him again, and he gets wounded too, etc. Uh, and if he's for whatever reason dying, sorry, let me take that one, and uh, at zero hit points, and someone for whatever reason removes dying, for instance, by stabilizing him, he gets unconscious. Did right? Yeah, I did, sorry. And then we have the last one. Decrease Frighten at the end of each turn. Uh, as you see, it happens automatically. Finally, a couple of random settings. This one, Marked World, is for the GM and simply if you want to have only have a place to be able to have two hero points, or if you want them to be able to have ten hero points, just move this one to whatever number you prefer. I prefer three. If you use AVP and you do not wish, uh, um, sorry, uh, automatic bonus progression, a variant rule, and you do not wish to disable item bonus, item bonuses, such as you want skill items to still give bonuses, then select this one. I don't use AVP, so. I never really used it, but apparently it works. Still works. Uh, this one I find very handy. Change to collapse by default. I think I need to refresh that. I'll do it anyway. <clears throat> this was slow. And when you use some kind of ability, it becomes collapsed. What you then to show all of it is click the title. Da 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 da. It it all works like this. It also works if you cast privately. It still gets collapsed. This is handy if uh, there's a lot of chat spam. If you don't really care about that message spell someone cast, then you don't have to look. If you do care, you can click again. All right, like this. And uh, then we'll show uh, automatically expand damage rolls. Uh, I think it was up asked to for this one. All damage rolls expand. We can show this one. Ah, uh, hang on. Uh, I have something here to add it. Okay, just roll damage then. And um, this is what I mean by expanding. And as you notice, if I turn out only the only the last three expand and refresh. Then indeed only the last three expand. You can still click them to collapse or expand. And that's all for tonight for me. And I only just now noticed that uh, you can't actually see the bottom of my screen. So some things may have been invisible. I chalked this up to not actually having used uh, OBS Studio before. Uh, hopefully you can figure out what I intended to show you. Anyway, uh, good night.